When you remove the layers of the unknown, what initially seems unachievable actually turns out to be a very good idea. Waste tilt, waste aggregates, natural hemp, and hydraulic lime. So we made a new brick for Venice. This pavilion is the culmination of our one year long research project funded by the Tyrians Foundation that's thrown into a mix a radical young architectural practice, a hands-on circular economy specialist, a design-led engineering practice, and a skilled local manufacturer. The pavilion is located in the Marinaresa Gardens, which is a public park. And we thought rather than having this static exhibit, to try and activate it and design it into a small room that could act as a small community library, a place to exchange books, to come take a book, leave a book, and propose a small space for reading that celebrates the light. The project takes inspiration by the traditional Venetian chimneys that you see uh, whilst walking around the island. They form an amazing skyline. There's actually 7,000 different types that have been documented and we took this kind of forms and scaled them up to design our pavilion. When the European Cultural Centre invited us to participate in this exhibition in the gardens, we reached out to collaborate with AKT2 and Local Works Studio. We were approached by the Architects Urban Radicals and Engineers AKT2 to develop a low carbon brick for Venice and we mapped the region of Venice to look for specific materials that could contribute to the ingredients to make the brick. We were looking for fibre, uh, a binder and aggregate and the fibre we sourced as hemp, it's a natural plant material, very very important to the region of Venice, gave rise to their historic shipping fleet in terms of ropes and sails, but a really wonderful fiber that gave real strength and flexibility to the brick. And then the aggregates were all sourced as waste, such as crushed brick, crushed concrete, crushed stone. Uh, and then the binders were a blend of lime, uh, which is higher carbon, and then the canal silt, which is zero carbon. So that was all the kind of blends, all the different colors came from those stock ingredients. Within these chosen two different types of brick, we were looking at a, a brownish, or kind of warm off-white colour, and then a slightly kind of cooler green colour. And that was actually a harder brick and contained more lime as a binder. And then the, the brownish one had more canal silt and was softer, but then also had different properties as well. We prototype here in this workshop and we were able to very simply form hydraulic press bricks. So they're not fired in a kiln, they're, they're just compressed bricks which are then cured. And um, we had those independently tested from, from us for flexural strength and compressive strength. It's very important that the bricks for the pavilion were constructed with a, a low carbon and kind of flexible mortar. So the mortar is based around the same ingredients as the brick. The material premise of the project takes uh, into account the mud which is dredged annually from the canals on the island and it's deposited in this artificial man-made island called Dresse. By engaging with these traditional methods of construction and the idea of net zero, we are basically trying to form this closed loop, taking material from the island of Venice and transforming it into a product that can be used in construction. At AKT, every year we have the possibility to have a funding that is dedicated to research. Normally research is based on technical research, but the Venice Pavilion, we have the possibility to use this research for design. And the idea is actually to connect the two, technical and design aspect, to create something that is exceptional. The unknown of the material was an apparent challenge we were very excited to take on board. We started by understanding the mechanical properties of the brick by commissioning some initial tests here in the UK. Following the receipt of the preliminary testing, we worked with Erpan Radicals to refine the geometry in order to achieve a compression-only structure. Finally, a set of structural tests were completed in Venice following the approved recipe of the bricks, which were completed just a few days before the installation and thankfully confirmed and exceeded our expectations. Considering that the structure is a set of conical and cylindrical geometries, the panelization of it was another challenge that we had to take on board. In other words, to put it more simply, to achieve an aesthetically pleasing result and at the same time ensure a consistent stress flow across all surfaces, the location of the bricks, their size, the mortar around it, were had to be derived with some specific geometric equations that were also used subsequently down the line towards uh, the construction stage to inform the brick layering. 
Venice is a very fragile environment and resolving issues that have to do with Venice is also responding to a wider global context of the way we handle the climate crisis on a global level. Ultimately, we're not just presenting an exhibit or an installation, but a new methodology. This tangible totem is a real-life reminder that through responsible design, we can readily turn local waste materials into a new construction product that's effective, enjoyable and sustainable.